Oh boy, Xbox, really known as the bringers of value in our industry, and that's thanks to Xbox Game Pass, the current standing best subscription service that you can get in gaming. And that's thanks to a huge library, a great price point, day one Game Pass releases, and of course, there are moments where it's on an excellent deal, like a dollar for a month, and you're pretty much stealing from Microsoft. Xbox is also kind of the rookie QB of the games industry. They've made so many future acquisitions. You're really believing in their future. You're waiting for that breakout season. So how do they one up themselves with all this mighty potential? They increase the price of Xbox Live Gold. So of course, we're going to be talking about that in today's video. But for those of you who are invested in the Xbox and PC ecosystem, or maybe just the gaming podcast in general, I do run a show called Defining Duke, an Xbox podcast alongside Carrick of ACG. I'm sure a lot of you are already familiar with ACG, one of the big independent reviewers here on YouTube. We've had fantastic feedback on this show so far, so I'll have that linked in the description down below, both audio and video podcast, whichever way you want to listen. I just want to get more eyes and ears on it because it has so much potential to continue to grow, but we just wanted to get a bigger chance and a bigger audience. With that, let's get all that out of the way and talk about Xbox Live Gold, which has seen a price increase. Now, I remember this leaked last night. I got a post sent to me from Reddit because people were expecting me to talk about it on Defining Duke, and they were saying, hey, Maddie, did you see that Xbox Live Gold is gonna go up? And when I saw it, I went, no, Microsoft isn't this stupid. Why would they ever do <laughs> They did it. Oh, they did it. And so they released a whole write-up here on Xbox Wire that we're going to be reading through together, cutting through some of the PR bullshit that's in here, and just kind of getting to the chase. So the first thing I noticed was the titling and who it was written by. It says, update on Xbox Live Gold pricing by Xbox Live Gold team. So they already knew this was going to go poorly. Why is that? Because it's not by a particular person. One person was not going to take the blame for all of this. So everyone just collectively went on Xbox. And that's a lot easier to shoulder than, of course, one person. And I'm not saying that I need one single person to just blast and be like, what are you doing? But the idea here is that they already anticipated a lot of blowback. So they're not stupid. They knew people wouldn't like this. And that's why it's already a bad choice. But Let's continue reading on why this goes against the consumers of value here on the channel that I always push. It's always about for the consumers. So the first paragraph is just bullshit. All right. Since we launched Xbox Live 18 years ago, we've been working to make it the most advanced multiplayer network available for the greatest community of game. <laughs> oh, you guys are great. You're going to pay us more, right? <laughs> I mean, can, like, why do companies do this anymore? I can read right through this. Periodically, we assess the value and pricing of our services to reflect changes in regional marketplaces and to continue to invest in Xbox communities. We'll be making price adjustments for Xbox Live Gold in select markets. In many markets, the price of Xbox Live Gold has not changed for years, and in some markets, it hasn't changed for over 10 years. Why is that the case, you may be asking? It's because they haven't added shit to it. The service is just there, and quite honestly, it's behind in a lot of ways. Like, I'm sorry, but this idea of subscription models in PlayStation, Xbox to get online, to talk to your friends, to play. When PC, you can get Discord and play pretty much every game for free. Even games in the Xbox ecosystem, right? So let's say you want to play Fortnite on Xbox. You want to play a free-to-play multiplayer game. I think Warzone, something like that. You have to be an Xbox Live Gold member. But if you go on PC, it's free. Now let's talk Xbox ecosystem. You want to play Gears 5? You can play that online for free. You buy Gears 5, it's yours, and you don't need Xbox Live Gold to play it. Sea of Thieves, you don't need Xbox Live Gold to play that online if you're playing on PC. But on Xbox, you do. Like, are they trying to drive people away from the consoles? Like, is that the idea here? Because I get the whole the idea of like, hey, we're on so many platforms. We're on Xbox, we're on PC. We're going to be on your phones now between cloud streaming on Android and Apple. But then like, you're pushing people away from like your main brand, Xbox. All right, so of course, we got to take a look at the price changes here. So what does this mean for you? If you're an existing online 12 month or six month Xbox Live Gold member, there's no price change. If you choose to renew your membership, it will renew at your current price. So good news here is that, you know, the people who are already there don't get burned. At least that's something worth being happy about, I guess. But let's keep going on here. The price of a one month gold membership is increasing for a dollar and the price of a three month membership is increasing five dollars or the equivalent in your local market now this to me is somewhat misleading because it's not until later in the article when you see the splits and a choice that xbox made a while back that's going to burn them here and make this value even worse. In that future paragraph, and we'll go back to the bullet points in a second, they say that one month will be $11, three months will be $30, and six months 
will be $60. Now, what usually happens with these subscription services is you save money by investing on the bigger plan. So for me on PS Plus, I like to invest usually in a year plan instead of like renewing every three months because that inevitably saves me money in the long run technically. But Xbox Live already got rid of their annual program. So you have only the six month sign up. So you're spending $120 a year on Xbox Live Gold. If you really wanted it that way and you're new to the platform and you wanted to sign up. Going back to the bullet points, if you'd like to upgrade your gold membership to Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, your remaining gold time will also convert directly to Ultimate up to 36 months. For example, if you have 11 months of Xbox Live Gold now and you upgrade to Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, those 11 months will convert to 11 months of Ultimate at no additional cost. So uh, yeah, Xbox kind of showing their hand there. I don't think I really need to explain it to all of you here, but the clear idea is to push people off of gold and into Game Pass Ultimate. Game Pass Ultimate comes with Game Pass on PC, Game Pass through the cloud, Game Pass on console, you get Xbox Live Gold rolled in there, you get the whole library of games in there. It is a phenomenal value, don't get me wrong, none of this takes away from it, but the idea here is that Microsoft is getting very heavy handed in that manner. And I'm sorry, but I said this on Twitter, the idea here is that you've effectively increased the price of Xbox Live Gold by offering nothing more than your competitors currently offering. You have not justified that price raise whatsoever. They tried to in one way, we'll get into that in a second, but they have really not justified that in any way, shape or form, and they've increased the price. But what's even more out of touch is that they did all this during a pandemic. I get the idea that maybe they wanted to maintain the Game Pass Ultimate price tag, which is incredibly attractive. You wanna sign up for that. You're like, this is too good to ignore. I'm signed up for it and there's an incredible amount of discoverability within Game Pass. You can find so many games. Like I review games, I try to be on top of all the games at launch and there's still new stuff that I find in there. Like Yes Your Grace, Spirit Spiritfarer, these are fantastic games I never ever would have played or experienced if not for Game Pass. So I get their idea of trying to maintain maybe a price point there where it was either, hey, do we move Game Pass Ultimate up to like $20 a month or do we increase gold for those who are there, make more money off of them and keep Game Pass Ultimate at its price and effectively push more people into Game Pass Ultimate where they can make more money. The idea really to me that's the issue is that this is happening during a pandemic where people are like out of jobs and stuff and they're like, money making move time, baby. Let's go ahead and push the consumer to pay us more because Microsoft is clearly a company that's struggling big time here. So when it comes to Game Pass, you can get Game Pass for console for 10 bucks, Game Pass for PC for 10 bucks, or you can get Ultimate for 15, which combines all of it, like I said. So the price plans, once again, are obvious where you have those options, or you can get Ultimate, which gives you everything and some insane value for 15 bucks. Now, how is Microsoft really trying to justify the Xbox Live Gold membership price increase. Well, they're saying that they're gonna give you more games with gold. And the games with gold offering in the past number of months has been absolutely fucking garbage. Like, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna mince words here. It's been terrible. And I've gotten so tired of these free games, and especially Xbox, because they're in a really sticky situation. You wanna have big additions to Game Pass, but you also wanna have people excited about games for gold. And this is why you just need to roll it all together, get rid of gold, just put it all in game pass just say we're canceling gold if you want gold and you want games of gold sign up for ultimate otherwise just sign up for game pass call it a day there but what they've done is decide to make it stick around and increase the price so right now they've announced the new offering of xbox live games with cold for the coming month february and they're offering you resident evil dandera gears 5 indiana jones and the emperor's tomb and Lost Planet 2. And so it's a real testament to how absolutely weird I am because I was more hyped for Indiana Jones than anything here. Because if you've watched my videos, you'll know when Indiana Jones got announced, I was like, Emperor's Tomb is an awesome game. I love that game. So to see that coming back, I'll play that. But I'm gonna be realistic here. As much as I have nostalgia bias for that game, this does not justify the price increase. All right, Gears 5, hype. Great looking game. It's got a huge Series X update there. But I feel like those who are already invested in Gears probably have already played it through maybe like Game Pass or something along those lines. Still, Gears 5 is a great game, but maybe this announcement wouldn't have stung as bad if at the same time they said, 
hey, we've actually moved forward our backwards compatibility. This is something that Microsoft really got stagnant with. They talked about it back in October with Game Informer saying they're still looking into it, but there's legal hoops they have to jump through. Getting games to run on the platform is tough across all these platforms. And I understand all of that. But what's happening here is we're having these diminishing values, this future potential, and it's just starting to really all clash together. And it's frustrating as someone who's getting closer and closer with the Xbox ecosystem because of our podcast, we're starting to interact with more Xbox fans and we're starting to see where Xbox is doing the right and the wrong. This is clearly a wrong choice. I don't think I need to spell it out. And so I just hope that they come out with a statement doing something about this, at least removing the barrier. Because here's the thing. It's not about the now, right? I know most of you watching my channel don't give a flying shit about Fortnite, Warzone, and I get that. But I think of something like Halo Infinite, which I think a lot of us are interested in. And for me, I'm very excited for Halo Infinite. Halo Infinite promised free-to-play multiplayer. This effectively neuters your own big flagship IP that's currently announced because I still think Starfield's coming exclusive to Xbox this year. But this effectively hurts your big flagship multiplayer IP that can push a lot of people into your system. A lot of people, especially if the multiplayer is free. Come on, wake up. The idea that these games are blocked behind a now increasing paywall is incredibly out of touch. It's been out of touch for a while. Now it's just getting a big spotlight shown on it. And as a person who is investing themselves more in the ecosystem, I'm very disappointed in Xbox today. And that is not something I've said in a long while. So that about does it. Xbox Live Gold getting an increase in price. We'll talk about this more on Defining Duke. We'll talk about this more on Ham Radio Podcast, whichever podcast you're choosing you'd like to listen to. A lot of podcasts. But anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Am I overreacting? I don't think so. But I always like to make sure that, you know, we're not establishing exactly what it is. And it's always up to conversation. So I leave it in your hands. Let me know what you're thinking in the comments down below. Other than that, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. Big thank you to all the patrons, all the members who continue to kill it with the support here. I appreciate each and every single one of you and I'll talk with you soon. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.